Hey, it's Mackenzie Nicole, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I told you that you are the female version of Tech 9 for this new imprint that Strange Music is doing, and you got super excited. You're still excited about I it know. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, t I mean, tell me what that is like for you, being that you are opening the doors to a new genre for Strange Music. You know, for me, this is really important in a lot of ways. Um, obviously, it's a huge privilege to be trusted to spearhead the pop division at Strange. But for me, you know, I knew that when the opportunity arose for me to open the pop division, that it meant a lot of things. First of all, it meant for me building my career foundation by casting this wide net into pop, even though I want to venture into other genres later. And really, you know, pop is not in any way my, you know, feel, my forte, my field of expertise. So that was a huge experimental thing for me. And that put more pressure on trying to, you know, open this division. But also it meant, you know, starting this new chapter, like you said, like, you compare, and I feel arrogant saying this, but you said it, so I'm going to build off of it. Right. You know, you said that I'm, you know, what tech is to strange music proper, I get to be for strange main. Mm -hmm. um, and really, to have the fan base who is, you know, they're hardcore hip hop fans, the technicians, the core strange music fan base, right. to tell them we're going to open a pop division, obviously they get nervous. This is an underground rap label. And so... The only person I feel like they trust to do it in a way that maintains the integrity of strange music is me. And so for them to give me that sort of trust, because they've watched me grow up. They've been seeing me do features with tech since I was right. nine years old. You're not, a new, you're not a new artist. Exactly. And they really, they're family to me. And these are the same people I've been seeing at shows my entire life. You know, there are some people that I saw at shows when I followed the tour when I was six right. that I still see when I perform at those shows today and I'm 18. Right. And so for them to put that sort of trust in me to you know, maintain the integrity of the label and this really cult following they've become a part of, but also to have the label trust me to, you know, in this very risky new venture that we're starting in. It was a lot of pressure, but you know, it's, it, it shows a lot of faith in me that I really appreciate. Right, right. And we're about to drop your debut album, The Edge, yes. less than two weeks away. Yes. So <laughs> not to add more pressure to that, but you know, <laughs> what was, take me into the studio, creating this record with the jam. Creating, you know, all, there's two features in there, I believe. Um, there are no features in there. No actually. features. There's a bonus track okay. with Tech on it, but that's it. Right. Um, it's a featureless album, and it has a bonus track with Tech on it because he put me on, so obviously. Um, but yeah, really, this album, like I said, the reason the jam was incorporated more than anything is because they know pop, and I don't know pop at all. Right. And so they really taught me, you know, that pop is very, and a lot of people say this with negative connotation, but I'm going to explain what I mean momentarily. It's very formulaic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very set standard, you know, make it upbeat, make everything sound like a love song, even if it's not about a relationship. Right. You know, there are very certain things that are just like trademark for pop music in order to make it successful and viable as, you know, a mainstream record. And, you know, the jam really taught me how to better generalize writing instead of making everything very obscure, how to, you know, do my vocals justice while stay, still staying in the realm of that sort of talk singy, you know, like I said, upbeat, vibrant pop music right. that we're all used to. Um, and still getting to incorporate some elements of those urban undertones in the beats um, or the rock elements in the beats that, you know, I really enjoy. And for me, that was a huge learning curve. Obviously, co-writing, my first time co-writing was also a huge, huge adjustment because you know, there's a difference between something that's biographical and something that's autobiographical. Mm. And so this album is a steady mix. You know, my co-writer Jordan from The Jam is a very happy, very relentlessly optimistic person. I'm not. And so <laughs> that adjustment was something that, you know, you can hear line for line. And one of the songs that I quote when I'm giving this example, uh, it's called Not You. The first line is, I was awakened by the sun peeking in through my blinds to say hi. That's Jordan. And then later in the song, you hear me say, I never thought you'd leave me here feeling so empty. How could it be so easy just to forget me? That's me. Yeah, that's me. And so... I'm going to start doing that when I'm listening to every yeah, track. I'm going to be like, wait a minute. You can kinda, it's this cool dualism that if you know, you know to look for. And I really love that a lot of fans that have heard me you know, kind of reference that are very excited about that. And as a writer, that's something that I would like to know about my artists that I listen to. So it's really going to be an interesting scavenger hunt seeing what people pick. But yeah. overall, like making this record was a huge huge experiment for me, very much out of my comfort zone, but if a true artist, you got to learn from everything you're doing. Right, right. And so I would say that massive learning experience and very, very pop product that I feel like really tested my limits and I think it works. I like that you are well-rounded with music. You have so many different influences yes. and you know, I, it still boggles me that you're able to create your own sound coming from so many different sounds. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so what is like the mastermind like behind that? Like, how, how does yeah. you know? It's like you're a scientist pie piecing Thank this you. together. No, you know, when people ask me to describe my sound or describe myself as an artist, I always say that you know, I'm an opera singer trying to start a pop division on a rap label that was inspired by a rock band. You're just confused. Exactly. That's, what, that's what we're going to say. So I am confused all the time, yeah. and I'm trying to figure it out. And I think that everyone's kind of trying to figure it out because they hear that, and they're like, what? Yeah. And that's kind of my reaction, too. I hear myself say it, and I'm like, ah. And so, you know, it's really... I grew up around music, obviously. I grew up in hip-hop. My heart and soul is in hip-hop. I was right. not... I, but unfortunately, this is what I got. You know, I'm not a hip-hop artist. Mm. And wh while my soul is that of a gangster rapper, that was not the skill set I was given. Right. And so, okay, I'm very, you know, I'm marketable in pop, so we're going, so I'm building a foundation there. You know, I always compare it to Rihanna, who started mm. with Ponder Replay and Club Hits, and has since done every genre since. Right. She's done Anti, which is a masterpiece, but she started with Ponder Replay. Great song, incredible club music, and she then built and did rock. She did reggae. She did trap music. She did some classical. Ugh. Right. And that's kind of the direction I want to go in career-wise is where I've started with this, you know, foundation on pop. But later I do delve into rock and I do alternative and I do like that sort of, you know, I do those passion projects mm -hmm. because no one's debut album is their dream album, but it's a great start. Right. It definitely is. So. It definitely is. Now, how has, you know, these collaborations that you did with Tech from early on in your, in your music career kind of helped you? develop yourself today in, in this debut album? You know, it's, if anything, very satisfying because at heart, it's very easy to look at me and go, ah, oh, bubblegum pop artist because like a little blonde hair, blue eyed, like red lipstick, well, usually red lipstick. And like, that's really not what my core is right. and that's not really where I come from. And so these collaborations with tech, like you can listen to a song like Preview, which even though it's not necessarily innately bubbly in its content or lyricism, mm. um, sounds very bubbly to, you know, on initial contact. And then you go back and listen to my, you know, discography and you hear Demons, King of Darkness, So Lonely, Fear, and you're like, oh, okay. Because naturally, and this is again where you see that kind of dualism in the writing on the album, mm -hmm. I do trend darker in my writing and in what I listen to and what I want to create. And so that's really having an outlet for that through the other artists um, where maybe I can't do as much considering the label, um, you know, has given me this pop record to do. Um, is really, really helpful. And it also is an amazing experience because I get to experiment across genres as I'm working with the other artists, you know? Right. Whenever I work with my label mate Prozac, I know he's gonna want an Amy Lee Evanescence sound and I get to pull out some opera and it's fantastic. You just keep naming like really great people. So <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> like that makes me even more excited. Thank you. And you know, when I work with someone like Recognize off my label, Recognize of Mayday, um, I know that I'm gonna go for, you know, for a little bit of more of a indie rock type, you know, with a little bit of urban influence still, but right. that's, kind of more the vibe almost like has some like reggae notes in it like it's it's this crazy ex experimental thing you right. know working with all these different artists from all these different genres and of course I grew up with so many of these artists and like tech like I always say is like my uncle and so it's a family reunion every time we get to perform together and every time we get to work together right and so now this this album drops the 13th of this month April yes. Um, then you're going on tour with Tech once again. Yes. Not not something new for you, but what can we expect on this tour now that you have a debut album out? Okay, so I'm going on 12, maybe more, maybe more. And so um, dates of this tour, and one of them is going to be right here in L.A. Nice. And basically what you're going to be able to expect is a lot more of a varied and unfamiliar set list, obviously. You know, that seems like an, a very uh, statement, but... In reality, incorporating some of the music off this album that I haven't gotten to incorporate before is going to be so vital. And I have so like such performable music on this track. You're going to hear some surprises from me and Tech. Um, and I don't just mean in separate sets um, because, you know, I've been known to show up in other people's sets <laughs> sometimes and crash them and do a couple songs. Nice. And so that may or may not be happening. But, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm going to cuss m for the first time on stage because I'm going to I may or may not be doing doing a song off of Tex Planet album, we will see, but that's, so that's gonna be fun. But yeah, just ultimately, you know, my stage show has changed drastically over the years, right? I started with four backup dancers and three backup singers. And a lot of the reason that I had the backup dancers is because I grew up watching hip hop shows, right? Yeah. And there's a certain masculinity and a certain, certain gruffness that I can't emulate on stage, so I was trying to compensate, right? Because I watched, I watched tech and like start mosh pits, and I wanted to do that, but I just, not with this music, and right. 
and I just can't do it. And it really, really I really suffered for a long time because of it, because I couldn't figure out an outlet for that. And then, so I got all these dancers and then eventually it became two dancers and one singer. And then eventually it became me and the singer. Mm -hmm. And so me and my backup singer, Crystal, who's actually Chris Calico, my label mate's wife, um, performed just the two of us for the first time at Red Rocks this year. And it was perfect. It was exactly what it needed to be. Cause finally I could talk to the audience in a way I didn't before because yeah. it was me versus, it was us versus them. And now it's just me and them. And I'm really a looking forward to incorporating that intimacy with the audience. That I discovered at that show in Red Rocks, mm -hmm. but also, you know, my favorite thing about rock music, follow me, it does, it will oh, get I've been, I've been. Is, is that, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty. And that's something that annoys me so much about pop music is everyone wants to be pretty Everything and perfect. Perfect, yeah. And I hate it. I don't like produced. I don't like polished. I don't like any of that. Right now, I'm not super produced and polished. I'm still too produced and polished for yeah. me, and it makes me, my skin hurt. <laughs> and so... We'll just leave that for the rock album, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, what that means is that on stage, I finally have this moment where I realize, like, I can, I can like maneuver in a way that doesn't have to be pretty and polished. Like I can be like Kesha, I can be like you know Janis Joplin, I can be like all these voices where it just it's emotion, no matter how it looks, right. no matter how it feels, you know. And that's what I've been going for, and I feel like I'm finally at that point, and it's finally going to show on this tour.